I'm Richard Saxton. My guest on the Business Channel today is Bill Shatner, an actor, a producer, a writer, and an executive now of a couple of companies and looking terrific. He just turned 64 years old. First piece of, that's your first piece of misinformation there. <laughs> I'd buy rather than sell if I were you. Okay. Uh, great to see you here. Uh, you're uh, becoming uh, an executive in some uh, state-of-the-art companies, which I guess is no surprise. Uh, let's talk about a couple of them. You're the CEO of Core Digital Pictures, which is special effects animation uh, for TV and motion pictures in Toronto. Core Digital is uh, located in Toronto, a group of uh, very bright, uh, very creative Canadian uh, people uh, put together a special effects company, digital effects, and uh, I'm, I'm with them. And um, strangely enough, out of the surrounding area of Toronto, uh, mostly uh, Sheridan College and, uh, and uh, universities, uh, uh, colleges like that, they are producing um, computer artists, uh, people who draw on computers, as a result of which, over the years, uh, the International uh, Light and Magic Company, uh, Lucas's uh, uh, special effects company, is uh, riddled with Canadians. And so here is now is a Canadian company, uh, uh, the ILM of Canada, and, and hopefully uh, as good, even better than ILM. And James Cameron, another Canadian, uh, has his company, I think Digital Domain. Digital so the domain. Canadians are dominating what we saw in The Mask and Forrest Gump, and I think your company is doing what, Johnny Nomadic, the Keanu Reeves movie? That's correct. Yeah. So is that the way movies are headed, uh, special effects? And well, it's so presents? expensive. You know, I mean, if you uh, remember Cecil B. DeMille and 10,000 Extras and, and pushing down the the uh, columns and uh, lifting up the tablets uh, with uh, thousands of extras yelling that can't uh, you can't afford that anymore so by movie magic we're able to recreate that and it's that movie magic that is the wave of the future okay and speaking of future future call company uh, what's your involvement there well future call company is a really fascinating uh, endeavor it involves the debit the telephone debit uh, credit card which means it's a prepaid telephone card which you would pay uh, a denomination of, uh, say, five, a five-unit uh, uh, card. You'd pay your money to have five uh, units of time uh, on the telephone. And on the face of the Future Call card company is a, a figure of one of the licenses we own, like Star Trek, for example. We own the Star Trek licenses. So there is Patrick Stewart on the face of a card. Well. Not only can you, by dialing the 800 pin number on the back of the card, get a long distance call made, but you can at the same time access Patrick Stewart on telephone entertainment. If you press whatever the number the operator tells you to, you can get Patrick Stewart to talk to you about what he did, what he's going to do, what he has done. Patrick Stewart, Leonard Nimoy, myself, the whole of the Star Trek crew, Procter and Gamble is in on that. We have the Procter and Gamble uh, soap opera licenses and many others. We're in Spencer's stores being uh, distributed in 500 stores across the country. We have a strategic alliance with uh, MCI. We're doing entertainment for other companies. It's a wild field that is just burgeoning now. Okay, now Core Digital Pictures and Future Call, neither are uh, publicly traded, is that right? Or no, no, it's their personal companies. Yeah. Okay, so they're privately owned, privately so no owned. way that our viewers can invest. Can get and buy, buy into that, no, but if you're making a movie, you might want to use Core Digital, and if you want to buy a collectible card that has telephone time on it, you've got to dial 1-800-TECH-TREK, T-E-C-T-R-E-K. -E okay, uh, Tech War. 911, uh, the horses in Kentucky, uh, and now these companies. Uh, how do you get all the time to do this? Uh, I come and visit with you and find out what to do, whether to buy or to, whether to sell, yeah, and you a, don't know either. It's a busy schedule. It's confusing. We talk to so many different people all day long. Yeah. Well, terrific. Uh, we'll be back uh, with Bill Shatner, who uh, is an actor, producer, and executive of a couple of companies we just talked about here on the Business Channel. <laughs> We are back. Our special guest today is Bill Shatner, who is an actor, uh, born in Montreal, went to McGill University, and uh, still has a strong affiliation and uh, association with Canada. In fact, uh, Tech War, which I should congratulate you, was what, the number one rated uh, cable network debut when it came out in January on USA Network. So uh, the show is doing well there. But you shoot that in Toronto, don't you? Shoot that in Toronto. And uh, uh, out of Montreal, they named a building at Un McGill University for me. Uh, so I, I'm uh, uh, there in Canada, both in uh, body and in spirit. Is it a, a theatrical building or a high-tech building? It's a rather languishing building. I think it's the Students' Union building, uh, where I spent most of my time when I was a, 
uh, a student anyway. Yeah. Core Digital is uh, expanding. You're going to try and double the size. You have an office in Germany, I understand. Well, we are. We're making uh, uh, movies in. Uh, for, we're making. We're doing effects for movies in Germany as well. Uh, we're not trying to, but business is uh, burgeoning at Core Digital because of the excellence of what we do. People who are coming to Canada who are making movies seek out Core Digital to do their special effects because we're essentially the only ones capable of doing it. Now, you have another TV series, uh, Man of War. Uh, apparently, are you looking for a buyer for that? Or uh, that? Man of War is a, is a novel that will be out uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, we have committed uh, uh, half the funds for a new series, which will be called Man of War, and we're uh, busily uh, selling right now. Uh, there's another book called Ashes of Eden, which is on the in the bookstores right now about um, a fictional story about Star Trek, Captain Kirk looking for the fountain of youth in Star Trek. So that's out there right now. But I wanted to say about Future Call Company that we're doing um, entertainment for other companies as well. We're doing phone entertainment for other companies. And we're doing a video conference call with a number of, the, the number of stations uh, have never been done before. The number of outlets have never been done before. We did a telephone conference call uh, uh, recently uh, with Patrick Stewart and myself on one end and 12,000 people on a conference call at the other end. Uh, it was an extraordinary technical as well as uh, fun event. Uh, these things haven't been done. So Future Call Company is of the future. It's being run by by young people uh, of the future, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Now, do you have, uh, I guess, pre-recorded messages that people call in and That's hear? That's it. We, uh, we talk to the actors uh, uh, and have uh, three-minute, one-minute sound bites, and the, uh, the people who call in can listen to something that's uniquely on the telephone. I've conducted many of the interviews myself with my friends, in other words, and, and elicited information and emotions out of them that they wouldn't have normally expressed. Uh, the entertainment is being produced by one of our companies for other companies as well. Uh, there is uh, Star Trek trivia, Star Trek, Trek games that you can access all on the telephone by getting yourself a, a tech card. Uh, with one of the face, on the faces of which are one of the actors. And they're collectible cards as well. Their value, intrinsic value, is going up uh, as well as being able to make a telephone call. So this is really capitalizing on the Trekkies. I know that in the late 70s, I emceed at the University of British Columbia a Trekkie convention with Gene Roddenberry. We had 5,000 people yeah. th that it's, attended. It is the most successful franchise uh, in the history of show business, maybe in the history of anywhere, uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a licensing company. And... Um, and uh, we're making use of that, but we're also with Procter & Gamble, and we're acquiring several other licenses. So the Future Call Company is taking its time in educating the public as to exactly what it is we're doing. We're working with strategic alliances with MCI, for example, and, and other companies. It's, it's the beginning of an enormous company. You do a lot of writing. Uh, you were talking about the book uh, that's coming out, and you wrote the Ashes of Eden. Ashes yeah. of Eden, and the six books I think that are part of the Tech, tech War, War mm -hmm. that you wrote from '89 to '93. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get the time away to, to do that? Well, I scurry down here, put on a jacket, say hello to you, or scurry back, take off the jacket. So you spend a lot of time in front of a computer screen and uh, compiling. I, I, I spend a lot of time talking. Is what I do. Uh, talking with people, working out ideas. Uh, dictating into a machine. I, I, I don't work with a, a computer very well. Okay, and you're, you're busy as an actor. Uh, do you have anything else that's uh, upcoming and maybe well, I'm, film? I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of directing um, pre-production pre for a, a, a really uh, fun film called Virtual Hero. It'll be out in a year or so, uh, but it's pre-pre-production, so I I'll have time to talk about that. And there are all kinds of other things happening. I know that uh, we saw Melanie in a car commercial with you a few years ago. That's now, right. is she acting uh, in Absolutely. any of your projects? She's acting, well, she's acting on her own. She happened to be, one of my daughters wrote the uh, 18th Tech War, and the other daughter, that was Elizabeth, wrote. Uh, she's a writer. Melanie, the actress, acted in, and I directed the 18th Tech War. So, Mike, go ahead. You had a question as well? Good afternoon, Mr. Shatner. How are you? I wanted to actually I have a question about the card, but I had uh, one quick question about your acting career, if I may. <clears throat> your acting style is so unique and uh, so terrific. And I wanted to ask you, when you started out, did you get any criticism about your style? I, 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 I don't know what the style is, um, uh, but uh, maybe that's why I was being criticized. Uh, no, I just went on, said the words, and did the best I could. and. And uh, I let what happened happen. 
you know, tremendous career uh, with Star Trek, T.J. Hooker, and 911, and Tech War, and so many other projects, uh, movies. In fact, you just uh, recently, I think, did a movie up in Vancouver, a, a TV movie, uh, not too long ago, didn't you? Yes. Well, it wasn't quite in Vancouver, but I just finished a, a television movie for CBS. Yes. Right. Uh, any downtime, or has it just been nonstop? Well, uh, I ride horses a lot. Uh, I don't know whether you consider that downtime, but Bell Rev is my uh, uh, as a as a farm that I. Uh, I breed uh, saddlebreds on, and um, and uh, and also quarter horses. So I don't know whether that's downtime, but to me it's. Is that an investment, or is that? Yeah, fun? no, it's a company. It's a it's a definite uh, horse company that uh, where we sell and train and sell horses, uh, some American saddlebreds for competition. So many uh, successful people get into either art collecting or car collecting, but. but well, American saddlebreds is very much like art uh, uh, collecting because they're works of art. Uh, great trainers work these great horses, and they become great individuals. All right, uh, Laura, your question. Okay, I'd like to know the call letters for Core Digital. Is that the company you said that you did? Yes, C O R E. Yeah, but that is not publicly traded. It's uh, a company that I guess has only been together for about a year. But that's correct. And I understand the investment bankers are knocking at the door, but you're still on, mostly held. On both companies, uh, investment bankers are wanting us to go uh, uh, initial public uh, offerings, but uh, we're, we're holding back. Okay. Uh, in regards to Core, Dark Zone is uh, what four two-hour movies of the week that are. Dark coming Zone out? is being. Uh, we're doing the special effects on Dark Zone. Uh, some of them being done in Germany uh, uh, as we speak. Uh, and uh, as you say, John and Mnemonic uh, is a picture that's. Uh, we did work on John and Mnemonic. This picture is coming out now. And then I think a pilot called what? Shock Treatment. That's correct. And is the, when? What is that? Is that going to be another series or? Uh, we hope it'll be a series. Uh, core operates pretty autonomously uh, up in Toronto. Uh, there are four partners, and they are either in front of a computer painting or out selling, uh, and uh, business is coming in to them uh, much more than, uh, than we're seeking business. Okay. As far as uh, your acting career, uh, how, as far as blending everything, uh, the, the novels that you write, the screenplays and so on, uh, are you pretty much starring in them or uh, do you have a part for yourself and in, in, in the work? That Sometimes. You do? Okay. <laughs> Mostly I prefer to stay out of it and, and direct and produce. Okay. So directing is, is, I guess, a passion every actor wants to have control, at least creative control, right? Well, it isn't so much control, it's the joy of, uh, of creating. Okay, let's uh, go back to the phones here. Uh, Steve, your question. Yeah, hi, I'm William. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank um, you. I'd like to know, um, I'm an applications programmer, and I want to go into more into virtual reality. Do you see there a big future in the near um, term in movie making for virtual reality programming? I do. I think that, uh, that the combination of being an artist and being technically uh, conversant with how a computer works and how you can do it is, uh, is a rare commodity, like any artistry. And I think there is a big future for, uh, for a uh, computer painter. All right, Carlos, go ahead. All right, Mr. Shatner. Yes. I'd like to ask you, do you have any plans in the future on directing any of the new Star Trek movies? Uh, what did he say? How about directing the new Star Trek movie? <coughs> yeah, the new Star Trek movies. <coughs> Are you involved in the, in the new one? Um, if you're talking about the one that's out there now, no, I was, uh, uh, I was an actor, David Carson's. And uh, the new one that they're thinking about, uh, they don't have a story on yet, so there's nobody involved. Okay, Generations is the one you're referring to? Yes. Yeah. And didn't Captain Kirk uh, have an accident? Or? He did have an accident. <laughs> so, but Stock did, uh, uh, Spock did too and won him, but he came back. Now. That's true, he did, didn't he? <laughs> Maybe he, they can work the same we magic? Can, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Or, do, or do you know yet? I don't know yet. Yeah, there's no script written, but maybe we'll be writing one now. Let's uh, go to the next call here. Uh, George, go ahead. Yes. Your question. Yes, my question is, uh, Mr. Shatner, um, I'm in the long distance service industry, and as you probably are aware, when you can uh, decrease your costs for providing the service, you can increase your gross profit margins by significant percentage points. So therefore, um, my question is, who at your company would make the decisions uh, to take on potential suppliers of service? I missed that last phrase. Okay, uh, wh which suppliers are you referring to? Well, for instance, for the future call company, you said you have a strategic alliance with MCI? That's correct. And, but do you use any other suppliers and arbitrage your rates? To For time, you mean? Uh, margin? Uh, yes, it is a good question. Uh, we, are, we are with MCI and uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay, so that's exclusive then, pretty much. They're a big yeah. advertiser here, too. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to other, uh, I mean, uh, keeping up your pace and other ventures you're getting into, uh, what are you looking at in the business 
side of things. You must get uh, t you know, uh, tantalized by a lot of people saying this is a good investment. I'm really in the business of making films. Mm -hmm. And so I left a meeting to come down here and talk to you uh, in which we were developing a story uh, for a movie company uh, that has asked me to do so. So we're in the middle, I'm in the middle right now of formulating a story and sending off uh, a writer uh, that I, I've hired to write the story that I'll present to the movie company. Where, where do you think we're headed? Earlier I was asking about uh, you know, core digital and the, and the special effects animation that we saw in movies like Forrest Gump and The Mask and so on. Do you think that's uh, you know, where television, I mean, based on the cost today, is that where we can head? Well, nothing takes the place of a good story. Uh, even if I were able to stand in front of a camera, and it's been done uh, by one and two people, uh, and tell you a story that interested you, that moved you and made you laugh and cry, uh, you wouldn't need special effects. But an audience who pays $7 wants more. So in addition to a really good, touching story, if you can give them production, uh, it becomes even more entertaining. But on uh, the other side is 911, a reality show. That's right? correct, and that's exactly my point. 911 works because you see somebody who is touched saying how grateful they are for the help of somebody brave who, who saved their life, and it works in close-up. Uh, what do you say when somebody asks you about a career highlight? so far what's been the, the greatest moment uh, for you? I say the the business channel interview was really something that I, uh, I never got over yeah, terrific and I hope we can get you back here and uh, do this again you're, you're just up the street right that's right terrific thank you so much for coming in thank you all right Bill Shatner my guest on the